Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own copper coil alcohol jet stove. Hey guys, welcome back. First I want to thank you for joining me today. And second I want to show you this new kind of fun little side project I've been making. These are copper coil alcohol jet stoves. If you notice, it's just in a regular short little canning jar. And these canning jars you can pick up at Walmart. They come in this big huge case here. Let's not get that too close to the fire. I've already made a couple of these for friends. And I'm going to make one here to show you guys just how easy it is to make and how efficient they are. Um, I did a quick uh, alcohol burn test with this one. Uh, I'm sorry, alcohol burn test, water boil test <laughs> with this one. And I stuck it in my hobo stove and I boiled uh, two, quart, two pints of water in about eight minutes. So that's pretty darn good for just a little tiny uh, alcohol stove. So we're going to get to the construction on this. I'm going to show you how to put it together. And I'll be right back. We'll start building it. All right, so first I'm going to show you what you need for this. And a lot of this stuff is what I use. You can use different methods if you want, different tools. But this is what I found works best. First, you're going to need some copper tubing. Now, um, those of you more familiar with copper tubing than I can figure out what size this is. I bought this roll, and it was probably twice this size at Home Depot for around eight bucks and change. Um, I already pre-cut a piece because it's easier for me to pre-cut a length and there's no particular length. I just pre-cut a piece and I'm going to wrap it. Now you're going to need something to wrap it around. Now I use this old piece of piping. I just stick it in a vise, wrap it around that. You're going to need some JB weld because you want to seal up your seals inside and outside couple of drill bits. This is for the holes for your tubes. And that's for your little tiny hole there. That's the only place you're going to be drilling a hole. You're going to need some kind of wick material. Um, I have to run inside and get it. I forgot when I was setting up this shot. But I do have, um, it's basically just candle wicks. Uh, not candle wicks. Uh, regular wicks from a uh, lantern. And I just cut them in half. You can see them in there. Um, anything will do. You might even be able to get away with power cord or something. It's not anything that's going to burn. It's going to wick and suck up the fumes into the tube. And then the gas comes out here, shoots up here, and that holds the flame in. That's where the flame lights. So that's about it. It's a pretty simple project. I also have some sand back here. Actually, mine's aluminum oxide from my sandblasting cabinet. You're going to want to fill this tube with sand, uh, dirt, anything. Just make sure it's full before you wrap it around here so you get a nice smooth if you notice how smooth that is there's no kinks in it the sand will keep everything intact as you wrap it around and it won't kink up and go flat on you so we're going to come right back and we're going to fill this up with sand and i'm going to go get that wick and i'm going to show you how i do it all right i threw down this uh ratty old towel because i hate cleaning up aluminum oxide from everywhere but here's how i do it now you can use anything you want in the ends of these, paper, a piece of wood, whatever. I'm just using the caps that came with the uh, roll to begin with. You want to cap it off at both ends. Now I'm just using this method. This is a uh, thing I got from the dollar store, a baster. I just suck it up in there, get it in there, match it up with the end of the tube, and just let it drop in nice and easy. It just goes right down in there without a problem. You want to fill that all the way up, okay? Right to the top when it's overfilling, and then you want to cap it. Once that's done, you're ready for bending. So I'm going to fill this up, and we'll come back um, over, and I'll show you over on my vise, and we'll uh, bend it. All right, I got my tube all filled up here, my copper tube filled up with that sand. Now, I'm going to place it about here, because remember, we're going to put a loop in this. You don't want to do it dead in the center, because then you'll be uneven. We're going to put a loop in this. So you want to put it here with a little bit longer on this side and begin your bend. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry if it doesn't look right. You're doing it right. <laughs> okay. You're going to loop it around there. Loop it around, loop it around, and there you go. Now, that looks kind of funky, doesn't it? It doesn't look anything like what's in my stand. Well, 
That's because you want to take it in here, flatten the sides together, so you don't want to empty the sand yet. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to come around this side of the vise and open it back up. All right, almost there. And you're just going to slowly crush it in, keeping your sides as straight as possible, moving it up a little, crushing this part in. You want a nice tight little circle there. Let me back up a little. There we go. And now, got a little bend there. Okay. Now we're getting a lot closer, aren't we? I mean, that looks a whole lot like that. So, once that's done, you're going to empty out your sand. And something I like to do, um, I like to run water through it. Now, I'm obviously not going to do that on camera because I don't have running water out here. I have to go to my kitchen to do it. But you want to make sure you get everything out of there because you're relying on this all being open air for the gases to build up and burn in there. So I'll be right back once I dump all this stuff out and uh, show you what uh, it looks like after then. All right, so we're back on the bench here. Um, I got all the stuff out of this. If you've noticed, there's a little tiny black dot there. That's about where I'm going to drill my vent hole. And I'm going to use the tiniest little drill bit I have. You want to start small because you can always make it bigger if it doesn't work. And you want to go bigger from there. So I'm going to start drilling right here. Nice and slow, or as slow as I can get this to go. <laughs> you want to make sure you don't put too much pressure because you don't want to drill all the way through. Stop and take your time. Not through yet, but you see we're starting to get a little a little hole there. So I'm going to drill that hole, and uh, we're going to come back, and I'm going to give you the dimensions to cut off for here and how to stick it into your uh, character. All right, so I got my hole drilled in there. I literally shut off the camera and tapped it one more time and it went straight through. <laughs> I figured it was going to take too long for the camera. Anyway, here's your, uh, here's your glass jar. All right, that's your little canning jar. These are short, I don't know what they call them, jam jars. I showed you where they come from. You can get them at Walmart. But of course, you see, that's going to be way too long. You want somewhere like right about three quarters of the way down in there. You can see where the wick begins and the, the thing ends. And again, this isn't an exact science. Um, I'm just going to take this up against here. I'm going to figure my, my uh, stove is going to be about that high off the top. And I'm just going to make a mark right there and right there. It doesn't even matter if they're even. I mean, again, you do not have to be perfect with this as long as you get a good hole there and your bend is nice and neat and your tube is clear all the way through. So we're going to cut off about that much on each one. We're going to come back and then we're going to do our top holes for this. All right, so we got the bottom pieces off. Um, I use this uh, rat tail file here to get in there and just make sure that nothing was left over. And I gave it a couple of swipes on the end to make it nice and even. Yeah, it, it, you just don't want to cut yourself while you're messing around with the wick. It's really not a requirement. Um, now we're going to measure where the holes are. And again, this is pretty, as long as you get it close, I mean, you can always seal it up with JB Weld. Generally what I've been doing, and I've only built two of these so far, is I just kind of lift it up and make my mark. And go back. And of course, it's working, but you probably can't see it on the camera. There, there we go. And I move that right about there. Am I about right? Yeah. So I'm going to drill two holes where my little black marks are. And I'm going to use this as a template, as a drill holder there. And I'm going to use the same size drill, approximately, as the piping. So where you're going to get a, a decent hole there, it's going to be about the same size. You're still going to want to seal it up with JB Weld, and JB Weld will hold. That was my biggest question. I'm like, that stuff's going to melt off the first time it gets hot. That's burned, gosh, I've burned this now for two days straight almost. I was so excited about building it. And it's still holding strong. All right, let me drill the holes. And then we're going to come back, we're going to put it in, we're going to JB Weld it up, and then we're going to insert the wick. All right, I got my holes. As you can see the back, they're a little... Uh, the drill on this stuff almost acts as if it's a hole punch. So what I do to negate that bump there is kind of just tap down, flatten it out. Now I already, and I see I got a little spot here, I've already picked off some of the extra 
metal that's kind of flaking away on the other side. Just tap it down nice and neat. Let's do a quick test fit. Boy, I hope this works because I'm on camera. <laughs> there, see? That's right in there. And that's lined up right with that. And if you do screw up, don't worry about it. You can always take a little round file and finish it up. So those holes are perfect. I do have to open them up a little bit, but they're perfect. So we're going to come in, we're going to um, put that in there. And then we're going to dig out the JB weld, weld it up, and we're going to cut the wick, and I'll show you how to put the wick in. All right. We've got it in there almost perfectly. Not a lot of air gap in between where the uh, coil pipe goes. Now, if you've never used JB Weld before, um, this is how you do it. I understand some of you may be new to doing this stuff. It's just one tube, equal amounts, the other tube, put them together, mix it up. It's that simple. Try and not mix up too much, but don't be stingy with it because you want to seal this up really well because that's what it's relying on. It's relying on the pressure. And if there's some way that the pressure can escape from there, it's not going to seal up as well. Now the bottom, I just glop it right on there. I don't try to make it neat on the bottom because no one's going to really see that. But the top, I'll get Q-tips out and try to make it as neat as possible. So we're going to do this up. We're going to finish it up. i get it off the pipe because that looks ugly. And I will come back and show you the finished product. All right, we got it all sealed up, made it as neat as possible. It's all sealed up good under there. Really, the important thing is getting a good seal. <clears throat> if it's not perfect, eh, it's all right. You know, this one wasn't perfect either, and it's still working. So I'm pretty pleased with it so far. Now, this is the quick setting JB weld. So it's going to take anywhere from 6 to 12 minutes to set up. I'm going to straighten that up. And I'm going to clean up my mess here. And we're going to come back when it's all set up and continue from there. All right, cleaned up my mess. Um, here's my wick. Now, this is an average, I don't know, I bought these at Walmart years ago for one of my uh, lanterns. It's an average size, but it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is cut it right down the red line, kind of cut it in half. Because if I were to try to stuff that whole thing up that tiny little tube, we would be getting nowhere or fast. So, just cut it down the middle. If it gets some strands, that's actually good. It'll actually wick the stuff up into the uh, tubes better. And I'm going to cut two equal pieces. Try to stay on that red line. This way, when I stick one inside the tube, I'll know about how far it's gone by comparing it to the other. Now, when you put these in, you want to get them to about up to here. Okay? And that may seem really hard, but once this uh, dries up, it's actually really simple. You just put it in there and twist. You get a little start and you just twist. And it'll twist its way up to about there. So when that's finally all dry, we're going to put those wicks in and we will move on from there and then I'll give you a little demonstration once it's ready to go. Alright, so I got one up in there to start with. Got a little uh, dental tool here that's helping me kind of push it in there a little. It's actually almost to the right height. And these will shred up a little bit as you put them in, that's fine, um, depending on the wick you're using. Remember, I'm only going by the one wick that I had, happened to have a line around. I don't know if yours will do the same. Now, here's what I was mentioning before. This is, what you want, this is why it's neat to save one out. I can measure it up along here and see I'm about to the right distance. There's the bottom. I'm about up to here. Now, of course, it's a little compressed. It's probably up to about there. So we're going to put it a little further in. We're going to cut off the bottom and kind of spread it out. And we're going to do the other side. And when that's all done, we'll come back and we'll do a burn test. All right, I got them up in there far enough. I've trimmed off the bottoms a little bit, kind of fray them out a little. We're going to give this its first burn test. Now, I like to use a... Uh, one of these propane torches to start it with the first time. You really don't have to. You can prime it um, just by pouring a little alcohol all over everything. And I'm still going to do that a little bit too. Uh, the first time you light it, it's going to sputter. It's going to shoot like crazy. At least my other two did. So, we're going to take a little rubbing alcohol. Just kind of wipe it around. Wipe it on everything, just to get it heated up. You want to heat up the coil so that everything up in there gets a nice gas going.
Now if this takes too long to prime, I'll prime it and then come back. And shake it up a little bit too. And it will take a long time the first time to light it. I also got something there. Getting something there. There we go. Do we have a flame yet? Yeah, we do. Turn off the light and let's take a look. There you go. You can hear it roaring. That is its first burn. I'm going to let it burn like that for about five minutes, four minutes, whatever, you know, just to kind of get it burned in. And there you go. So, oops, I hope you enjoyed the video today. It's a real simple copper, copper coil stove. I mean, I've made three of them so far. They've all worked perfectly. That's probably going to need to be relit. So I'm going to blow it out. Um, it's probably going to need to be relit and primed a few more times. And then, you guys, you can see, none of them are the same. They're all kind of twisted, different, whatever. But the concept is the same. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And I will talk to you guys next time.